Hey guys, I'm here on location today at my good friend Brittany's little studio where she keeps all her reptiles and amphibians. Uh, shopping off a dart frog enclosure that I built for her. And we've kind of had this tank in the works for a while. She wanted me to build this lovely 36 by 18 by 36 exoterra mansion for her young adult pair of tokay geckos. Um, they've laid two clutches for her so far in the enclosure they're in now. But we're hoping with their little love pad, once it's all said and done, she'll be able to provide some awesome captive bred tokays. Um, she does have her own little small business as well. She specializes in um, geckos, first and foremost. Works with some other things as well, but definitely check her out. She's awesome. I love her to death. We're very, very similar as far as mindset and really put the welfare of the animals above all else. So I'll link her website down below so y'all make sure and show her some love. But with that said, we're going to get to building this bad boy. So Brittany was kind enough to have a bunch of supplies ready for us since this is a rather large enclosure. So being toe case, um, they are a more tropical species. So we are going to do a false bottom with the expanded clay balls or the Lika and then um, some tropical ABG that she mixed up as well. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. It's a couple inches deep. Um, you know, I'm used to building dart frog tanks where you want a pretty substantial layer. Um, these guys, even though they're tropical, don't require nearly as much humidity. So I think that's going to do just fine. And now she has the uh, fiberglass window screen that we're going to use as our substrate barrier. And whenever you're putting your false bottom in, you know, like substrate, I love to make it uneven. And, you know, it adds a different aesthetic, some nice appeal to the tank, makes it look a little more naturalistic. But with your false bottom, you want it to be as even as possible. Um, that way, you know, if you do see water start to build up, you know, it's like evenly distributed through the bottom of the tank. All right, so this is perfect. For the substrate barrier, you don't have to buy anything fancy. You can go to your local hardware store, go to wherever they have the window screen. Y'all, I buy a big roll of the fiberglass window screen for like eight bucks and I can make a ton of tanks with it. So there's a little cost saving tip for y'all. And now we're gonna start adding substrate. Like I said, um, we're kind of DIYers around here, so Brittany mixed up some ABG. There's plenty of recipes out there, but if y'all have any questions about it, feel free to drop them down below and I'll help you out. All right, so we have a pretty deep substrate layer, which is what we're gonna want for these guys. So they are some larger geckos, a little bit heavier bodied, and we are putting a young adult pair in here. So they're already fully grown. So with that in mind, you do wanna be a little bit more selective with the plants that you put in here. And you know, I have a lot of people ask me, especially at the trade shows, do I have to use live plants? The answer is no, you don't have to. But I always recommend it. Um, not only for the aesthetic, you know, I'm a plant person, I understand not everybody is. Maybe you don't feel confident keeping plants alive. I'll be the first to tell you a lot of people struggle with keeping house plants alive, but if you keep them in an enclosed, controlled environment, you know, a lot of people go from having a black thumb to a green thumb when they start keeping plants in a terrarium. So definitely don't be afraid to give it a try. But the other thing, whenever you're keeping tropical species, is having those live plants in there definitely helps maintain the appropriate ambient humidity without you having to constantly mist it and battle that. Not to mention, you know, once again, the aesthetic just makes it look really nice and beautiful. Um, they definitely tend to appreciate it. So you'll see some of the plants that we put in here later 
I'll explain to you why we're using them, but they serve as great little refuges for them to rest on, perch on, um, drink water droplets off of, because you know a lot of these geckos, they're not geared to drinking out of a water dish. They're gonna lap water droplets off the glass, off of the plants, the hardscape, that kind of thing. So it's definitely beneficial to give it a try. And now I'm just gonna add some live oak leaf litter in here. And we're gonna mix this into the substrate as well. Just a couple of nice handfuls. All right. And this helps fuel your cleanup crew or your microfauna that you add to your enclosure, which we will do last. And I usually just use live oak leaf litter to mix in, um, cause you're not gonna see it and you know, no hard feelings to the live oaks, but I like to save my prettier leaf litter like sea grape or magnolia, um, large oak leaves, things like that for my top layer that you're actually gonna see. But like I've talked about in previous videos, I like to use both a thin cuticle like the live oak that breaks down faster along with a thicker cuticle like magnolia or sea grape that breaks down slower. That way you get um, different process times in your tank. And it just looks a little bit more natural too when you have a couple of different species of leaves in there. All right, so the substrate smells excellent. One of the best smells, some fresh substrate. Looks good. So now we're gonna start playing around with some hardscape. And so Brittany and I were vending a show recently and there's a gentleman that had some really, really awesome pieces of wood. So she got this mega piece thing is like a couple feet big. So we're definitely going to incorporate this in here. And y'all, I get asked about like my tank building process all the time. Um, <laughs> I play around with the hardscape and the plants. That's usually the longest part of any tank build for me. So if you're not feeling something or getting frustrated, it happens to all of us. Don't worry. Don't get discouraged. Just Play around with it. If you need to, take a break, step away, come back with a refreshed mind and spirit. And I always say it's art, so just make it work. It'll be beautiful. But I definitely want to try and utilize all of the space possible. Um, you know, give them good floor space up to the ceiling of the tank since they are arboreal geckos, they'll definitely use it. But I think I like this here. And especially any bigger, heavier pieces of hardscape, whether it's wood or cork, I always sink down in some substrate. And so this one is kind of sunk down almost to the false bottom here because the safety of the animals is definitely paramount whenever you're building a tank. Um, I've seen a lot of people make mistakes, especially in like arid setups, um, when they're building for say a Euromastix or a bearded dragon or an arid snake, and they'll use rocks. That's probably the most common hardscape feature I see this mistake with. And they'll just kind of precariously place heavy rocks. Well, guess what happens when the animal digs underneath of it? creates an unstable structure. We definitely don't want that to happen with any animals. So you always want to make sure your hardscape is nice and secure to help prevent any accidents. We also have this really cool branchy piece that I think I will use down here if I can get it to fit. And if you are building, you know, from the top down, you always want to watch your tallest parts and make sure you can shut the lid on it and secure it. 
Same thing with the front, since this is such a large tank and it's at eye level, you always want to make sure you can safely shut and latch the doors. So really like that. And now Brittany has these really awesome cork tubes. So we love to use cork tubes for our tropical geckos especially, especially these tokes. So they do have a tube in their enclosure right now that once we get them out and move them in, we're gonna take out of there because it's actually the one that they've successfully laid eggs in. So they tend to like it. So we wanna keep it in there for them. But now I'm just gonna play around with the cork. Now we have this really awesome cork too. Has a little fork, some nice lichen on there, really nice and beautiful. We might take a little small piece of cork just to prop underneath here, but we'll see. I like that so far. All right, so this is pretty secure in there, but I'm gonna see if I can't secure it some more with one of their cork tubes they have in there once we get them out. And now I'm gonna start playing around with some plants. And so like I talked about earlier, <laughs> these guys are larger bodied. They are gonna utilize every square inch of this tank. So you do need to be kind of aware of what plants you're putting in there. And so, first plant I know I want to use is this big Sanservia, or Sanseveria, however you want to say it. This is a really hardy plant. And I just have to decide where I want it. So you can see it's already really well established. And it does have very thick, hardy leaves on it. So they hold up great to any of your more destructive species. And they're very tolerant of uh, people that maybe don't have the greenest thumb as well. But you can see this one's already got a bunch of little babies coming off of it. And now, once again, like we talked about earlier, they do tend to drink water more from plants, hardscape, and glass. So we do have a really nice big Neorogelia bromelia. I'm thinking it'll probably go right here. And so I get asked because I actually propagate a lot of bromeliads myself. Um, you know, about people thinking they're just really difficult plants. They're really not. So they are epiphytic. And so if you notice, I'm planting it directly in this cork tube hollow. Uh, being an epiphyte, that means they are air plants or um, they grow on trees in the wild. So this is a bit more of like a natural way to grow these guys. And you'll see me put some moss in there to help secure it and make sure the base of it stays nice and humid. But these are great because they're little reservoirs in the axle or the center cup. And so it's a great spot, you know, with daily misting for geckos, chameleons, things like that to learn to go and drink some good water from. And now we have a lickety split philodendron. So this is a beautiful plant. Um, this was recently propagated off. I'm thinking right back here, we'll do the trick. So you can see the huge root system on this, hence the deeper substrate layer. I'm gonna make sure and pack that in. And you don't wanna plant your huge plants too close to the front 
Um, you want to make sure you know you have enough room to safely work, not have a bunch of plants and leaves get in your way all the time. And so that's why I'm kind of pushing this guy back into the corner as well. Pink Photonia here. Just put a little ground cover down here. I don't anticipate the Toke spending too terribly much time down here ripping up plants like, say, a snake would. So I think this Photonia will do okay down here. But you know what? If it doesn't, that's okay. You can always pull it out, let it heal up, and use it in a different enclosure. All right, guys, so this is one of the cork tubes that was in their uh, prior enclosure, previous enclosure. So like I said, you can see this gap here um, on this really nice cork tube. I don't wanna just leave that because once again, that goes back to risking the safety of the animals. Um, you know, they're not super heavy body, they're not, you know, a snake or anything like that, but um, definitely don't want to take a chance, don't want to take a chance with my own animals, much less somebody else's animals. So I think this piece will work perfectly to prop this one up. Just got to get the lickety split out of the way. Be gentle with this. Takes a little bit of finesse and patience. So if y'all saw on this cork, it had a nice little angle on it. Um, Brady said it was like her map of Italy piece of cork is kind of what it looked like. So that little offshoot is actually wedged in the center of this tube now. And now this is on the ground. And so this is also potentially going to hopefully serve as like another nest or egg laying site for them as well, since they have previously lain in cork tubes. Um, but adds a nice little aesthetic to the tank, provides that extra level of safety, and fills up that empty gap. So I'm really digging that. And now Brittany was kind enough to get me some sphagnum moss. And so like I said earlier, I am going to pack some around the base of this bromeliad. And so all you do is take it out. I kind of get a big wedge Granted, I have small hands, so I'm gonna set this, oh, caught a root in there, over here for a second, and make sure I have a nice, kind of tight seal. I think I'm ready to add some more leaf litter. So I'm going to take some more of this uh, small live oak leaf litter. And like I said, have my thin cuticle and my thick cuticle for different breakdown times. Provide plenty of leaf litter because y'all, if you've kept any kind of like tropical arboreal geckos, you know they can be nasty little pigs. So you want a nice booming population of springtails and isopods in with them. Because I work with Valsuma geckos and I don't work with nearly as many geckos as Brittany does, but I can tell you those guys are pigs. <laughs> and this Brittany's lychees, they like to leave nice big presents for her as well. All right, so I think that's good for the live oak. And so now we have some nice thick cuticle magnolia. So this stuff takes a lot longer to break down. And like I said earlier, it adds a nice, more naturalistic aesthetic to your tank as well. You know, think about going to a forest or a jungle or anything like that. You don't really see just one type of tree there. I'm pretty happy with this so far. Like I said, we do have one more larger tube in their enclosure. Um, one of them is currently in it right now though, so we are 
trying not to stress them out, but we will show some uh, footage of that whenever we get them in here. All right, guys, so now we're adding our microfauna. So we're doing some dairy cow isopods, if y'all can see that dude, and some powder oranges. And Brittany has a ton of cultures, so I'm just adding a bunch in here. Because like I said, if you keep our boreal tropical geckos, you know, we love them, but they are messy pigs. So that definitely helps with the uh, cleanup process. And then now she's got a little culture of springtails. So these are some tropical springtails in here. Not sure if y'all can see them, but I'm just gonna pour a decent number off of here. And I usually will just do one little pass across the tank whenever I'm pouring off the, like one of my master cultures. And you can get the charcoal and everything in there. I'll usually just kind of scoop it off of anything and shove it down in the substrate. And there we go. Now we have our little tank janitors set up in here. So now, um, forgot to mention, you may have noticed the new addition of another bromeliad. So Brittany had one uh, bromeliad that she's really fond of that had a couple pups off of it. So she asked if I could incorporate one of them in here. So this is uh, Brittany's little request right here. So this little dude is just chilling. But I think all that is left is to, uh, you know, move the tokes in here and get that final piece of cork. And I believe we'll be good to go. As far as lighting, let me get this bad boy down. So I put on one of the Tinkman LEDs. This is a 36 watt. This thing is awesome. Um, it has the little protective cover on it. And if you've used LEDs, you know it's pretty easy to overturn them in the corded sockets. This does not have that issue because it has the plug built right in to it. So that is a fantastic feature. Y'all, I've used pretty much every LED light on the market. I'll tell y'all, my buddy Tank Men's, they're my favorite. Um, they're the ones that I personally use over my entire collection, so I definitely recommend them. But we will uh, get to moving these guys in here. All right, guys. So since we were working with an adult pair of tokes that have a clutch of eggs in there, we did have to be very careful and invest all of our attention into safely getting them into their new home. So we did not get that on camera, but I wanted to show y'all the complete tank. So Brittany added her basking light up there for them. And we added this little basking ledge just with this cork. And this was the tube that they have laid their eggs in and that they are both in, happy as can be. So they are upgraded into their lovely 36 by 18 by 36. And Brittany is hoping to be able to give back to the species, because you know, this is one that's unfortunately very commonly wild caught. And give some captive bred babies out on the market. So I hope y'all enjoyed this build. Thanks for watching and make sure and like and subscribe. Turn on that bell notification so you don't miss the next one. Bye.